What is going on everybody? My name is Japes and welcome to today's second episode of Let's Prepare. As I was saying in the last one, I sold on my team. I made a little bit of profit on all of them because some of the cards got hyped up. Like I think I made about 5,000 coins on Inui, uh, which is always nice. And I went out and I started building the 4321. Turned out to be not just a BBVA team, a little bit of a hybrid side. Uh, you're going to see me going about buying the cards on the screen and it's kind of one of those things to think about with buying cards for the next FIFA. The kind of the way to do it is you kind of get a feel for the price of what they're going for. And I look through maybe, I don't know, 10 minutes worth of cards and see what people are bidding, what they're not bidding. And then I just go find the cheapest buy now for something below that. And I'll go ahead and buy that. Um, I'm not going to make any coins back probably on them at this stage in the game. However, I'll be able to sell them for probably about the same that I bought them for. So I really won't be losing anything, which is half the battle, half the time. That doesn't quite make sense. But I think you get the gist of what I'm trying to say. Also, uh, as far as the missing days of uploads, that's we're going to get a day worth of uploads. or All of them will be made up over the next few days in one way or another. So have no fear. There will be an equal amount of uploads for equal amount of days. That is the intention and that is the goal. And uh, I do believe that we will succeed. But I'm rusty, guys. I am rusty indeed at this game. Uh, with what I was talking about with head-to-head, -head, I think I'm going to have to go back and start playing head-to-head. -head. And if you guys want to see that, then I am totally down to upload that. I might try to play like... I don't know, a game with every team and see how far I can get with that. Something along those lines. Um, whilst working on the fundamentals, try some new things out because it's time. It's the time to experiment. It's the time to uh, figure out if you missed out on something. It's, you know, maybe if you're going to say, well, James, shouldn't you have done that at the beginning of the game? And yeah, but there's, I don't know. When FIFA first starts for me, I play it and... If I find something that really works for me, I tend to just stick to it. And the 352 was that sort of thing. So that is what I stuck to, and that's what I rolled with for a really long time. I mean, it did a very, you know, it worked out well for me. And actually, that's, well, head to head's a little bit different because if you guys think way, 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 way back to the Kick TV uh, invitation amongst YouTubers, I used a plethora of different formations through that. Um, and I went through, the reason I did that was because I wanted to utilize. Uh, different aspects of different teams. So I figured out which formation I think would allow them to do it best. One of the better examples I would say would be when I use Bayern Munich. Um, the 4-2-3-1 is a widely thought of uh, maybe best formation for head-to-head. -head. Uh, well, not widely, but it's accepted as a very, very strong formation for head-to-head. -head. And I actually found that I liked playing the 4-2 or the 4-3-3 uh, defensive, which is a formation that's very, very similar to the... Uh, four two three one. However, Bayern's best FIFA aspects are going to be Frank Ribery and Ariel Robin, and so getting them as far forward as I could, but still attacking from the wings, uh, was what I wanted to. Now, Bayern's midfield was a little bit slow because I didn't play Luis Gustavo, so I wanted to make sure that I actually had two center defensive mids rather than just center mids that couldn't be caught out and sit in front of my center back center backs. I cannot wait to get my hands on 14 and see if the defensive mid position is going to be as important in this FIFA as or is as important in the next FIFA as it is in this FIFA. Uh, generally speaking, if you don't have a defensive mid in your formation, you are going to be putting yourself at a disadvantage. At least that's my feelings. And so going in with this 4-3-2-1 formation, I knew that. And I knew that if I came up against formations, you know, if I came up against the like the 3-5-2 per se, that's everywhere. And I get blamed for being uh, part of the problem with that. But if a 3-5-2 sweat team, so your Brazilians, your BPL, whatever you want to call it, uh, if I make a mistake with my two center backs, I'm going to get a goal scored on me. And that's just fact. And that's why those teams are so effective because you have to play flawless defense like just about nine times out of 10. And the reason I say nine times out of 10 because there's that human error with shooting and finishing that comes into consideration that people also mess up. Uh, but that's nine times out of 10, you're going to get yourself in trouble if you make make a mistake with your center back. Now, let's talk about briefly the left back and right back thing that I mentioned in the previous episode. In this team, I'm trying to pick left backs and right backs that I know have good heading. Now, I just picked Fabio Contral for my left back. Now, why did I do that? That's because when I play with Real Madrid and head-to-head, -head, I, I like using a 3-5-2 formation. Now, the 4-2-3-1 is very, very good with Madrid as well. However... 
because of my you know love that I've developed to the 3-5-2 over time, uh, I use Contrao as my left center back, Pepe as my central center back, and then Sergio Ramos as my right center back. And that's because Fabio Contrao, I think he's six foot one, and his heading is good enough to be able to play one of those center back spots. That means that I move Marcelo up to left mid. Now, why don't I use Marcelo as a center back? It's because he's only five foot nine, and he has a hard time uh, defending headers, especially if someone uses Cristiano Ronaldo or a player like that as their right striker in you know whatever formation that they might be using. It's just kind of little things like that that I take into consideration. I lit originally, I bought uh, Lichtensteiner from Juventus because he is a very big guy as well. The other option was to get Caceres, and actually, neither of those options worked because I needed an AC Milan link to get uh, KPB at 9 chem. So I had to go out and I bought Abate. And Abate, I have such mixed feelings with on every FIFA because he's so, so pacey, which means he can be so, so good. But he ten his pace almost is like a burden because he gets a little bit too far forward forward and it, he can catch up don't get me wrong however he gets himself forward so fast that if you give up the ball in a bad spot then he's going to be caught out of position and here's a little bit of crossing finds Gonzalo Higuain uh, for a nice little easy nod home and I don't really like crossing because for me it's not very reliable uh, and what I mean by not really reliable is when other people do it they seem to score when I seem to do it I like I don't know if I cross in the wrong points or I only cross when I'm desperate uh, but that's just like a really clunky skill move from David Villa all of my attackers in this squad I wanted to move up to that four star skill move so that I could, you know, work on getting the chops and the burba spins and that sort of thing in there, as well as a lot of times these guys have pre maybe a little bit better ball control, but add just another aspect to skill moves as I keep working my way forward. So I don't know if I went fully into the squad. At left uh, forward, we got David Villa. Striker is Iguain at my right forward spot. I've got Palacio. Kevin Prince Boateng, center mid behind Palacio. I've got the inform form ever Benega and Benega in past FIFAs has always been one of my players and his informed card I actually find uh, to be a very very good player I think he'd obviously be best in that CDM spot but here's a sweat team that I was talking about my left center mid uh, is going to be Luka Modric and you can see there's my mistake with my center back and he got that little bob move from his striker so it doesn't always happen like that but when it does you're going to get screwed I went for that slide tackle because he put the ball out far enough in front of him and if I were to take that away then I would actually be in a really good spot to counter so I judged the risk and I weighed the risk and I decided to go for it. Here's a nice little long shot, little deflection, but whatever. I'm going to take it. KPB, 27-minute uh, goal, brings us level. And I still have the controller issue. It's just because I move the controller after I score a goal. I tend to put it down, and that's when it disconnects because the wire is bad. It is a wired controller, not a wireless. Uh, but you can see right here on the counter, here's my mistake with my center back. I don't I go and I body him well and then I overbody and he just goes right through me. And when that happens, I have to go over correct. I thought he might try to take a step inside and beat me. He did not do that, I guess, wrong. And that's two shots, two goals essentially for him. That's all he had, but I couldn't come up with anything more clever than that. So again, my rust is showing through and I dropped another game two to one. Anyways, I want to thank you guys for watching. There'll be one more episode out today, so stay tuned for that. Other than that, my name is Japes and I will catch you all next time.